Now we are going to solve our transfer pipe. Uh, this is a pipe segment, and we need to add information about the heat transfer. So here, you from the heat transfer, most of the time we estimate the HTC. Here we are going to select the bipole. We include in the heat transfer the inner HTC. We are going also to include insulation for this pipeline. Most of the time for the gas gathering, we didn't add any insulation. And also we are going to include outer HTC. You are going to select all of them. For this, the temperature we are giving it to be negative 9.4 degrees Celsius. And here, you are going to keep the type of insulation the same, but you need to add the thickness. Okay, so you have a thickness of insulation around the pipe equal to 3.8 E with a negative 2 meter, which almost equal to um, 1.5 inch. Okay, the medium here isn't the ground, it, this is uh, the air, it's above the ground, and you have the velocity this is the wind velocity okay so you need to make sure that if your pipe is exposed to air it will be supported enough so you have a velocity of air equal to 11.176 meter per second okay so here all information you you have about the heat transfer is added and you will find your pipe is solved if we look here at the pressure this is the inlet of the transfer line and the pressure here is 370 if we look at the feed pressure it will be 328 this is what i'm talking about this is the pressure drop that happened inside the pipeline the pressure at the inlet would be higher than than the outlet and it must also work for the temperature because here we have a heat loss or a heat loss so for the temperature here it's 400 and for the exit it would be 398 so it's a two degrees less drop but this drop can form a wax for example so if i want to check that my feet don't have a slug or a wax in this case we do something called flow assurance to do the flow assurance here at the beginning i want to show that instead of uh, Pointing out to the material stream as I did here to check the temperature and the pressure You can enter the worksheet and here you have all the information that you need about the pressure uh, This is the temperature and this is the pressure Also, you can compare the composition of the feed in and the out it must uh, It shouldn't change actually because here you have a physical change um, Not the change in a composition, okay? So again to the transfer line and I want to do a flow assurance. In this case, maybe I want to check the slug analysis. So this one at the analysis. And in this case, you just click here, do slug calculation. So the calculation is completed. And actually from the beginning to the end of the pipeline, you have a slug flow. And this is the information about the frequency so at the beginning of the pipeline you have a slug length of 509 and at the end it will be a 332 which means it decreases actually so maybe we want to check uh, we don't have a hydrate actually because we don't have water okay so for the wax maybe here this is the wax information and it's not calculated um so for the slug to uh, form uh, this we don't have anything to change with slug tool calculation option okay so we keep it as it is until maybe in the exam you are asked or is your data sheet you are given information about this one during the expert exam most of the time you are asked about to do a flow assurance calculation and this is important to do because most, most of the time you are asked about the slug and also the slug lens okay so here it appears that we have the slug flow at the exit of the, of the transfer line and also at the beginning of the transfer line okay so now we are going to maybe summarize this uh, this uh, case and next we are going to install a balance and adjust the plug to 
enhance the formation or the performance of this unit okay so here we here as a well this is the upstream we have our this is our stream but here we are making it in um, in the simulation piece so for example if you have a dry gas and you you want to make it a wet you can you have two options you can add water to the dry or you can um okay let me show you by f1 f4 sorry here okay this one here this one is a stream saturator if you have a dry stream you can use a stream saturator to add water so the mixer here this is for gases okay most of the time for gases my stream here doesn't have water so i mix it with water so this is the actual stream that is produced from the wind we heat it in two two steps the first one with a heater and second one with a heat exchanger because the salting works at higher temperature okay if i enter the desalter and i look for the information i'll find out that the desalter feed is entering as a vapor as a liquid okay and here this is a liquid this is a vapor and this is a liquid okay so the high temperature at because of the heating will be responsible for separating the overhead vapor the temperature of the desalter or any separator two phase or three phase is constant okay and also we separate here at the same flow if you want to change the this you are going to ch work with the dynamics here and there will be a separate course about the dynamics later on so we have the salted water and the vapor and here you have your crude which will be heated again with this uh, heater and we are going to do the pre-flash to separate our light uh, product and our heavy product will be heated again and we here make um, the heat loss and the pipe drop uh, as a pressure drop into inside this pipe after that we are going to add a furnace here okay but not in this course this course is mainly for the upstream so in our next video we are going to install a balance and adjust and this is important because we want to look at the vapor fraction for the stream to the desolter. Okay, so if you go here to the desolter stream, and again, if we look here, we have a vapor fraction equal to zero. Okay, it's zero here, so the phase to the desolter must be liquid. We are going to add the balance and adjust to enhance the separation and the performance of this unit.